Thanks for listening to the Belonging House Fellowship Podcast. Here is this week's message from Chris John Otto and the House of Artisans. O Root of Jesse, standing as a sign to the nations before whom kings will shut their mouths and whom all nations shall seek, come and deliver us and do not delay. Oh, that some kings would shut their mouths. <laughs> Isaiah 10, 33 through 11, 10 is one of the most well-known but misquoted passages in the Bible, and Mar- Marguerite read from it today. <clears throat> it's where we get this kind of cliched image of the lion and the lamb. And if you notice, there was no lion and lamb together in that passage. There were lots of other things, but not lions and lambs. The lamb is with a wolf, and the lion is eating straw. Not quite an image as you thought. But this image of the lion and the lamb persists because it's compelling. And in English, it sounds good. So that's why it persists. But the real emphasis of this passage is about the root and the stock of Jesse. And this passage contains one of the core ideas of the kingdom and the essence of who and what the Messiah is. It's about humility, family, symmetry, and poetry in the Holy Spirit. And it is, honestly, one of the most beautiful passages in Scripture. And we get all kinds of paintings of the animals together and the peaceable kingdom. There's about 10 different versions of the peaceable kingdom that's going to come when the Messiah reigns. The rod of Jesse isn't about the outside in. A dead tree still has some life flowing in it. The life is in the sap. And the sap of the tree is the Holy Spirit. This rod of Jesse is about the inside out. And this is the kingdom. This is life. It's all about life. Jesse's an odd person. He's an odd person to point back to. And it says something about the kingdom and the character of God. It's about the nature of the kingdom. This passage begins with God lopping off. In every uh, version of this, the term is lopping off every tree that exalts itself. God opposes the proud. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. The word in all the translations is lop. God isn't trimming nicely. God isn't carefully pruning. God is taking a machete and he's lopping things off. And what's left at the end is a bunch of stumps. That's the image we get here. And one of these stumps is Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. But God's nature is to honor. Keep this in mind. This is very important. God's nature is to honor. And God cannot violate his nature. Ever. God doesn't violate his nature. So God honors Jesse. Why does God honor Jesse? Because Jesse is the father of David. For no other reason than because of his son. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Ironically, we know almost nothing about David's family. I find this really interesting. Greatest king of Israel. We know nothing about his family. Very little. We know that his great-grandmother was Ruth. We know that his great-grandmother was not Jewish. Right, David. We know that David's mother is a mystery person. 
who gets referred to throughout scripture as the handmaid. Very interesting. And of course, Mary refers to herself as the handmaid of the Lord. And when it came time to anoint him as king, David's father didn't think he was even worth calling. <laughs> the only thing that David says about his family is this. Though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord is always at my side. <laughs> we don't know the names of any of David's brothers, although they all are listed, or they're all mentioned. They're not really named, but they're listed when they come forth, when Samuel comes to anoint David. Mm -hmm. But none of them yeah. are mentioned later on. So we have to guess that they probably supported Saul. Because they certainly didn't fight with David when he was trying to secure the kingdom. Interesting. Like so many places in scripture, this is not a happy family. And this family is lopped off. But out of it, a shoot, a rod grows. God is growing a new family tree. And this family tree is a tree in the spirit. And the rod of Jesse isn't about the outside in. The, the rod of Jesse is a dead tree that still has some life in it. And the life is in the sap. And the sap of this tree is the Holy Spirit. This rod of Jesse is from the inside out. This is the kingdom. This is life. For those of you listening to the podcast and everyone here, Sounds like I only have one sermon. Yes, it's true. I do. Only have one message. But fortunately, it's the message the Bible has. Glory to God. God lops off Jesse for a reason. It's about pride. God is looking for those who will go low, are brought low, and who can be used by God. Wow. Wow. So we have family and we have humility. And then we have symmetry. Out of this stump, a branch comes out. And this branch is different. You've heard me say that he, the Hebrew mind values numbers and that we miss a lot in the Bible if we ignore the numbers. So, and I also say, pay attention when God repeats himself, right? So right yes. here, we have two numbers and we have re repetition. So the two numbers in this text are four and seven. Isaiah says that the spirit of yud heh vav -Hey, the spirit of Hashem, the Lord, will rest on him. Hashem is the Hebrew word for name, the name. This is the spirit of him who was and is and will be. This is the spirit of the one who spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. This is the eternal spirit of God. This is the spirit that hovered over creation. Pay attention because this gets repeated. And the word here is ruach. Ruach. It's the word for spirit, breath, and wind. What's interesting is that Hebrew and Greek have something in common. The word he in Hebrew for spirit is ruach, wind, breath, and, wind, and spirit. And the Greek word pneuma, pronounced the P, pneuma, is also the word for spirit, wind, and breath. I find that kind of interesting. So we hear this word ruach, and it's repeated four times. So we have to pay attention, because four is an important number in Scripture. And what is this number? This number is the number of creation. It's the number of the created order. So God is creating something. 
just like at the beginning when the Ruach hovered over the waters. This is a new tree. It's a new family. God's creating a new family. And out of this new family, we have the sevenfold Holy Spirit described. We have the Spirit of the Lord, yud heh vav -He. We have the Spirit of Wisdom. We have the Spirit of Understanding. We have the Spirit of Counsel. We have the Spirit of Might. We have the Spirit of Knowledge. And the Spirit of the Fear of the Lord. These are not seven spirits, but a sevenfold manifestation of the one complete whole. Just like pure light refracts into seven colors, this new branch will bear all these spirits. And we're pointing toward a person. And this person is the Messiah, Mashiach. Mashiach literally means shiny. I bet you didn't know that. Shiny is the word for anointed. So imagine being in the hot Israeli sun. <laughs> and a person comes and they pour oil all over you. What are you going to be in the hot Israeli sun? You're going to be shiny. It's very simple. <laughs> so when <laughs> Moses comes down from the mountain, it says his face shone. He was anointed. And the Messiah will be the one on whom the Holy Spirit rests. These sevenfold spirits will rest on him. And this inner resting of the spirit on this new branch will manifest in an interior ability to be a good judge. Now, we in our world, we don't think of judging the same way the Bible does. God intended his government to be exercised by judges not rulers. We see a judge as a person who's subordinate to whoever's ruling. But Moses was a judge. He was mm -hmm. the first of the judges. God wants people to be free. God wants people to be free. In fact, Jesus said, I came that you might ha be free and have fullness of freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Just think about that. You could think about that all week. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Christ didn't set you free to do something. Christ didn't set you free to serve him. Christ didn't set you free to discipline you. Christ didn't set you free to help you with your problems. Christ didn't set you free to pay your bills. Christ set you free to be free. Say that. It is for freedom that Christ has set me free. free. So God wants people to be free. And the work of the judge is to sort out the places where people's freedom gets snarled up. Two people are being free and one gets hurt in the process. And so you have to go to a judge who sorts out what the right thing to do is. God wants relational harmony. That's the purpose of a judge, is to bring things into harmony. Shalom. God's government is not people controlling other people. We often overlook the idea of being a judge, but from the beginning of Exodus to the end of time, to the end of time, what does it say Jesus will come back to be? Our judge. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But from the beginning of Exodus to the end of time, judging and the exercising of judgment is always seen as God's government. Moses judged, and then he set up 70 other judges. And remember what happens to them? They get anointed by the Holy Spirit, remember? And they start to prophesy. And then Joshua becomes judge in his place. 
And the plan was that this was going to continue. And the last of the judges was Samuel. Then they call for a king. And God raises up a king after his own heart, David. But he says that someone out of your line is going to be a righteous judge. This branch out of this dead tree is going to be the judge. With righteousness, he will judge the poor. Not with outward sight, but with an inward understanding. When we look back at Solomon, he began his life by praying that God would give him an understanding heart. The spirit of understanding. And why? So that he might rightly judge his people. And when we're given examples of Solomon's wisdom, it is always through examples of judging disputes. Solomon is the wisest because of the way he made decisions solving disputes. And when we look forward to the future, you know, in our minds, we're thinking, oh, Jesus is going to sit on his throne and he's going to send the sheep to heaven and he's going to send the goats to hell. And you're, if you've been naughty and you said a bad word, he's going to know and he's going to tell you. And there's going to be, you've all heard this sermon. Jesus has a, has a slideshow projector of your life and he's going to show it and you're going to see it and you're going to have to make a decision. No, the Messiah is coming to rule and reign through good judgments. Yes, there is the last judgment. But there's this judging of the nations. With wisdom, he will judge the poor. He will not judge based on his sight. And what does Jesus do? When you look at Jesus in his life, think about this woman who was caught in adultery. What did he do? He judged. He walks into a synagogue on a Shabbat, and there's a woman bent over for 18 years. And he doesn't look at her and judge her badly. He just says, stand up. And what are these conversations that he has with all these leaders, these Pharisees and these Sadducees? What are they? They're questions of judgment. Again and again. Rabbi, answer a question for us. And he does. And, and, and what do they often say? You teacher, you've judged rightly. And what this passage tells us is that you cannot render good judgment without the Spirit of the Lord. We're talking about the government of God. This is the kingdom. And how is this branch going to do this? With the ruach of his lips, it says, with the spirit of his lips. The Holy Spirit is going to come out of him. And how? How's the Holy Spirit going to come through him? Through his teaching, through his word of power, and through his judgment, through his solving of problems. And this teaching is going to do what Paul says. All of creation is longing. For the revealing of the sons of God. And so we have all these, these wild pictures of things that are predators and, and the food chain all getting disrupted and little children playing in snakes' dens and lions and oxes eating straw together. He's going to undo the Darwinian equation. What Darwin observed wasn't wrong. He was observing a fallen world. And the broken world is absolutely right. The dog does eat the dog. It did, the fittest, fittest do survive, but that's not the plan. Jesus is going to come back and he's going to undo all that. And rather, no one will harm or hurt on this holy mountain. Jesus wants to upset the food chain. The kingdom is about shalom. Nothing broken. All things in harmony. Why? 
because the whole earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord and everything about the Lord is life and yes and health and strength. It's a lot bigger than your personal relationship with Jesus. God wants all the earth, the created order, to reflect his personality. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a sign to all people, and they will come to him, and he will give them, as it says in the King James, perfect rest. Other Bibles say, a place to dwell in. And when you have a dwelling place, you can rest. We begin with humility. Jesus emptied himself and became a servant of all. And out of this emptying, God raised him up. And it says here, this one is the rod, this one is the branch, God raised him up, and this sign is the cross. You go low, you empty yourself, and God raises you up. And he was raised up on a cross, and he went down into the earth, and then he raised up again from the dead. And he was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that John the Baptist said he would baptize us with. And that same spirit that raised Jesus will live in you. This tree is a family tree. This tree is a tree in the Holy Spirit. It is the tree that bears fruit in all seasons, like it says in the book of Revelation. And that fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. I am the vine, you are the branches, and all of this grows out of the same root, the same stock, the stock of Jesse. And Jesus said, if you live in me, and my words live in you, the ruach of my word, the ruach of my lips, the breath of my lips, my word will dwell in you, and you can ask anything in my name. And I will do it. And when you are in him, and he is in you, the same spirit is in you. The kingdom is all about the spirit of God resting in Jesus and flowing through you so that you can exercise his judgment along with him in every situation. I'm sure as Christmas gets closer, and, and, and I know that in our house, there are lots of challenges right now from everyone's, I've just, it's astounding what's going on in people's lives two weeks before Christmas. I'm sure that as Christmas gets closer, you are starting to deal with family. We all have family stuff. We all do. We are people. And in the midst of it, we are given this really striking reminder that out of the stump of a broken family, God establishes a new family tree. That's the first takeaway. And you and I are grafted into that tree. And when that happens, the life of God in you can flow out. We're all given situations that seem like conundrums, you know, those crazy making situations. How do you solve this crazy situation? We live in a world of crazy making. I'm off the media right now, and it's because it makes me crazy. Really, to be very honest, God told me to get off it, and it was because it was sucking the life out of me. We live in a world where credentialed people, 
the ones who are supposed to guard the gates and keep the law are actually the chief lawbreakers. We've got a bunch of credentialed people with no qualifications running things into the ground. And in order to get credentials, get recognized, you have to be like them, become like them. Well, we can't become like them. In this topsy-turvy situation, we have to come back to the rod of Jesse. He judges rightly. And the sevenfold spirit in him, if you are in the vine, can flow through you. So these seven things might. Here it is. These sevenfold things, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I'm so sorry Rachel's not here today. You know, she's an expert in this, and she's aligned these seven <laughs> spirits of God with the seven colors of the spectrum and the seven days of the week. And I've really been thinking about it, and it's just so amazing, you know, because the spirit of might lines up on with Thursday, and Thursday is the color blue which is my favorite color, and it's the day I was born on. So there's a spirit of might in the blue. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's right. That amazing, and today is red. So Elizabeth's wearing the color for the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that mm -hmm. interesting? But this spirit, these, this spirit of the Lord flowing through you, can flow through you. You know, we were talking a little bit in the prayer time before how sometimes the holidays are very difficult. They don't have to be difficult. You know, one year, one year the Lord spoke to me in, it was November, and he said, this is the going to be the best Christmas ever. And he kept saying that, and he said, Chris, you need to declare this over your life. This is going to be the best Christmas ever, and there's going to be a revival at Christmas. Let me tell you, everything that could have gone wrong that year did. I've yeah. had a few of those. I've had a few of those. But I kept saying, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. God said, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. Do you know what happened? The Holy Spirit, as I declared this, what God had said, changed my attitude so dramatically that when these things happened, I just giggled and chuckled and said, well, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. And I, I sailed through it all. And I thought, hmm, that's very interesting. When you're in Jesus, in the vine, and you get into these tricky situations, you can say, Jesus, you are in me. You put your hand on your heart. I do this in the grocery store. Jesus, you are in me. I am in you. Your life flows through me. This life in the vine flows through me. So I need your spirit of wisdom right now. Calm spirit of wisdom, flow out of me. You know, we talk all about gifts, but we forget fruit. And fruit is the much more important of the two. And everybody has all the fruit. You know that. We all have all the fruit. But the problem is the church has taught us that we're supposed to try harder to have fruit. I don't know one tree in the, in the garden that is trying to bear fruit right now. <laughs> As, as Thomas Merton, who died on this day, December 10th, 1966, said, A tree gives glory to God by being a tree. You give glory to God by being in the vine. So all you have to do is say, Jesus, you are in me. I am tapped into you. And because you are in me, all your qualities can manifest in my life. I need your spirit of wisdom right now. So come, spirit of wisdom, flow out of me. 
Jesus, you are the most patient person in the universe. And there's a person in front of me who I want to use blankety blank words about. But you have patience and you see them in ways that I can't. So Jesus, your patience has to manifest out of me. Jesus, you are the strongest person in the universe. And I have things that I'm too weak to carry right now. You've all heard me tell this story. I was in London, bouncing from place to place, trying to find a place to live, carrying a suitcase, and my back went out. And I was walking across Hyde Park, and I couldn't carry it anymore. And I said, Jesus, you've called me here, and I can't do this, but you are the strongest person in the universe, and so I need you to carry my bag for me today. And I picked up the bag and it was weightless. And I walked to where, well, I hobbled actually, carrying this bag to where I was going to stay that night. Jesus, you're the wealthiest person in the universe. You own all things. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I do not know how the bills are going to be paid. I don't know where it's going to come from. But you, in me, can manifest. You can, you can order this. You can provide. You can make this happen. I need counsel and understanding right now. I need more than I have. That's the point. Come Holy Spirit, Jesus. I need the word of your mouth right now to speak into this situation. I need the word of your mouth to speak to me. And when you do this, when you do this little exercise, you will manifest good fruit. The point is this. The rod of Jesse isn't about the outside in. The rod of Je Jesse is about a dead tree that has life flowing through it. And the life is in the sap. And the sap of this tree is the Holy Spirit. And this rod of Jesse from the inside out can give you life and give life to other people. This is the kingdom. This is life. Thanks for listening. If these messages have helped you, please like, subscribe, support and share. You can find out more about Belonging House Fellowship in the description. No matter what's happening in your life, remember, fear not, God can be trusted.